Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Sunday morning services, April the 19th, 2020. And this thing just keeps going on, but we're sure excited about what the Lord's doing through our videos and broadcasting. And we'd like to welcome you to our services this morning. We're going to begin this morning by singing page 180 in your hymn book, if you have it, or on your song sheet. Isn't the love of Jesus something wonderful? Why don't you stand with us and sing out, even at home? There will never be a sweeter story, story of the Savior's love divine, love that brought him from the realms of glory, just to save a sinful soul like mine. Isn't the love of Jesus something wonderful, wonderful, wonderful? Isn't the love of Jesus something wonderful, wonderful it is? around me, reaching to the farthest soul away, saving, keeping love it was that found me, that is why my heart can truly say, isn't the love of Jesus something wonderful, 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 oh isn't the love of Jesus something wonderful, wonderful it is to me. Our human comprehending love of God in Christ, how can it be? This will be my theme and never ending. Great redeeming love of Calvary. Isn't the love of Jesus something wonderful? Wonderful, wonderful. Oh, isn't the love of Jesus something wonderful? Wonderful it is to me. Thank God for his love, and it is wonderful. Yes, and now we're going to sing, Since Jesus Came Into My Heart, number 194 in your songbook if you need it. We'll sing the first, second, and the last verse, Since Jesus Came Into My Heart. What a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. I have light in my soul for which long I had sought since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart. Floods of joy o'er my soul like the sea billows roll. Since From my wandering and going astray Since Jesus came into my heart And my sins which were many are all washed away Since Jesus came into my heart Since Jesus came into my heart Since Jesus came into my heart Floods of joy o'er my soul like the sea billows roll shall go there to dwell in that city I know since Jesus came into my heart and I'm happy so happy as onward I go since Jesus came into my heart since Jesus came into my heart since Jesus came into my heart floods of joy o'er my soul like the sea billows roll singing this morning. Now, Brother Charlie Hughes is going to come open us in prayer. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Pray with us. Lord, we thank you for this day. Thank you for your love, your mercy, your goodness to us. Pray you forgive us where we failed thee. Just thank you for another opportunity, Lord, to dig into the Word of God and yes, learn a little. Pray you bless Pastor. Bring to his mind Bring those things he's prepared. I just pray the anointing, using. Bless Brother Copeland, Miss Glory, and others as they play and sing. Use them. Anoint their they're singing and they're playing, and Lord, may it just encourage our hearts, but may it prepare our hearts to hear and receive the message. 
Just want to thank you this day for Calvary. Thank you for the Lord Jesus. Thank you for the Word of God. Pray you give it a free course this morning. Pray the Holy Spirit would just lead and guide and direct in all we do. May you be honored and glorified in through this service. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. At this time, we'll sing page 200 in your hymn book if you have that. He's a wonderful Savior to me. Again, we'll sing the first, second, and the last verse. He's a wonderful Savior to me. I was lost in sin, but Jesus rescued me. He's a wonderful Savior to me. I was bound by fear, but Jesus set me free. He's a wonderful Savior to me. For He's a wonderful Savior to me. He's a wonderful Savior to me. I was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. He's a wonderful Savior to me. He's a friend so true, so patient and so kind. He's a wonderful Savior to me. Everything I need, in Him I always find. He's a wonderful Savior to me. For He's a wonderful Savior to me. He's a wonderful Savior to me. I was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. He's a wonderful Savior to me. Dearer grows the love of Jesus every day. He's a wonderful Savior to me. Sweeter is His grace while pressing on my way. He's a wonderful Savior to me. For He's a wonderful Savior to me. He's a wonderful Savior to me. I was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. He's a wonderful Savior to me. Good singing today. Huh. Thank you, Brother Copeland, and good morning. morning. It's good, good, good to have all of you uh, with us today. Amen. And uh, I'm always tempted, or most of the time tempted, to say it's good to see you. <laughs> but it's I'm not seeing you, we're not seeing you, you're seeing us. And we appreciate you uh, turning us on today. And uh, in all seriousness, we want to be a help. We want to be a blessing. Uh, if I could just say to all of our church and all of uh, believers that are watching, uh, this can be a great time of growth in faith. Amen. As we read our Bibles more, pray more, make sure we tune in to the uh, to the videos, and I'll give you those times again if you uh, don't remember them or haven't heard them. Uh, but uh, it's also a very dangerous time. Uh, we're not able to congregate together yet. Uh, prayerfully, we pray that it won't be too much longer, but we don't know yet when that's going to be. So again, let me encourage you. I'm praying for you. Uh, just be very honest, I'm concerned because the devil would love to come and snatch uh, uh, young believers, weak believers away and uh, during this time. So don't let that happen. Keep reading your Bible, keep praying, yes, sir. watching the videos, call us. Yeah. We're trying to call a lot of people. Uh, why don't you call us, call each other. Man. Uh, just get to know the directory there. Remember to pray through that. I ask you to pray for all of our members at least three times a week. Maybe you want to do that more during this uh, COVID-19 uh, pestilence. And uh, if you would, and, and just pray for them. Listen, got something really exciting. We announced this on Wednesday night's uh, 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 broadcast. And that is a, a special contest. Uh, and you uh, should be receiving your weekly letter, uh, either... Uh, Excuse me, you should have had your weekly letter by now already. So if you want to go get that weekly letter, we're going to do something with it in just a moment. Now, there is a, there is a number written in the, if I remember the right-hand corner of that letter, 
And uh, what we're going to do, just trying to get you to be all honest with you, we're trying to get, make sure you read that letter every week. We want to read that letter every week. Now, a lot of the things we say are repetitious, uh, but some of the things are new, and we need the repetition to remind us we need the new things to keep up. But we're going to have a good time with this. We have, uh, we have uh, uh, two prizes we're going to be giving away each week, and uh, we're going to draw uh, those numbers today. Second prize is going to be a gift card to the Sonic. First prize will be a gift, mark, a gift card to Walmart. Again, what are we doing? We're just trying to encourage you to read that letter. And, uh, I, I, and so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw these numbers this morning. We've got two numbers. We're keeping this in the family, trying to stay our six feet uh, away. So we're keeping this in the family. Brother Charlie Hughes, uh, as most of you know, is our son-in-law. And so we're trying to keep this uh, in, in, uh, in uh, the family here. So I'm going to draw, and if you've got your letter there, Brother Charlie, let's take one of those, okay? All right. I'm going to draw that, and... That one says, if you can see that, number 37. Number 37, okay? Now, number 37, I'm going to write on the back, is going to be second, except my pen won't write on this material. So, I don't, I don't know. We're going to try Brother Hughes' pen here. And he must have paid more for his because it is <laughs> writing. So that is second prize. Uh, I'm going to give that one back to Brother Hughes. I'm going to draw that one right over there. That was number 37, and it is second prize. And if I can get that out of there. And this is first prize number 26. I don't know, again, if you can see that. Number 26 and that's going to be first prize, which will be the Walmart card. Uh, the other one will be the uh, uh, will be the Sonic card. Okay, so I hope you enjoy that. We just like to do some some different things. Let me give you the schedule again. Of course, uh, uh, this morning at ten o'clock was our second broad second broadcast third, third broadcast uh, for the kids program. And I'll tell you, I'm enjoying those as well. Uh, we, uh, we had a, a Bible drill this morning, and I, I am not good at Bible drills, when I, we're, but I'm still doing it. So I hope you parents will get in there with your kids. Amen. You get involved. Amen. Then at 11 o'clock, of course, is, is this broadcast. 6 o'clock is the evening broadcast. And then the drive-through right after that. And, and listen, last Sunday, we miss some of you regulars that are coming through, and I know it was cold. Uh, we were standing outside, so I, I know it was cold. Uh, but I also know it was Resurrection Sunday. Some of you have told me you had family in and that kind of thing, and so, uh, so you didn't come. We hope you'll be back tonight. And if you haven't come to the drive-thru, we had two new folks drive through last Sunday evening, and... Uh, we hope that you will be with us, Amen. and it gives us an opportunity to fellowship. And again, uh, some of the young men will be out, and they'll be directing you. As you, if you haven't been here, if you've been here, you know already. They'll be directing you on what to do when you get here. But you'll have an opportunity to fill out a prayer request card. We pray for those requests at least on Tuesday, and then uh, we. Um, uh, uh, you have an opportunity to pay your tithes, give your offerings, Amen. and I, I do want to encourage you, just because we're not coming to, to the church house, the tithe is still the Lord. Amen. The missionaries still need to be supported, Amen. and uh, we are dropping uh, just a little bit behind. So if you're not paying your tithes and, and giving your offerings, church, please make sure that we get Amen. that done, yes, okay? Then uh, Wednesday night, uh, uh, excuse me, Tuesday, we have uh, uh, the Central Connection where we just have a, you'll get to see the faces of the people that 
came through on, on uh, Sunday night. Uh, just a short testimony there. Wednesday, we have uh, Wednesday service at 7 p.m. Then Thursday, uh, uh, Mrs. Chad's Bible study at uh, 2 o'clock. About a 15-minute program. And she's doing a treasure hunt through the Bible, giving you some great things there. I, I do want to. I do want to give you uh, just a real serious prayer request. I asked you last Wednesday night. Things have not improved. As a matter of fact, they've gotten worse since I talked to you on Wednesday night. Church members, you've received a uh, phone call on this for our friends uh, uh, Philip and and Monica Tharp in Ireland. If you will, please remember to pray for them. Yes. They both have the COVID-19. Um, i a little sketchy right now on the five children, but please pray for them. Very, very serious condition. Yes. Yes. Well, we're trying. I, I thought about this the other day. Let me give this to you. And I want to ask you, are you walking? Now, I mean that serious. Sorry. Are you walking? Especially seniors, senior citizens. Not seniors in high school or seniors in college but senior citizen, are you walking? Now remember this, if you quit walking, you're gonna quit walking. Yeah. And we have to keep moving. Let me encourage you to get out. I just wanted to say a word to our, our senior citizens. I love you and I don't wanna see you get to the point for where you become immobile. And the only way we keep that, and I know it hurts, and uh, but let me encourage you to do that now. Uh, a real blessing. Uh, we're, we started a couple of weeks ago having someone come and share their salvation testimony. Now, again, everybody gets saved the same way. Amen. By repentance uh, of our sin to God the Father and by accepting Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. Yes, Amen. Now, it's our joy to have uh, Brother Bob Gustin that's going to come today. Uh, Brother Bob and his family have been members of our church 11 years, I think now, 11 years. My time has gone by so, so quickly. Uh, we had only been in the new building about a year when, when they came. And just uh, this family is a real blessing to us. Yes, yes, sir. And we're gonna ask Brother Gustin. Uh, Brother Gustin is uh, one of the instructors over, he's over the machine uh, uh, shop, machine teaching out at Amarillo College, and he's just a real blessing, he and his wife and their daughter, you uh, you saw sing last Sunday morning, Miss Amanda, and uh, uh, the, uh, the big thing about this family right now is they have a new granddaughter, and they're excited about that, and uh, they have a couple more grandchildren in our church as well, and we love that. Brother Bob Gustin, if you would please, sir. Morning, all. Uh, let's start out with my salvation testimony. Like Pastor said, everybody gets saved. You know, we get saved the same way, but under different circumstances. And mine was, I I grew up, you know, I didn't have the blessing of growing up in a godly family. I mean, we didn't even go to church. There was no attempt made to go to church at all. And so <clears throat> I just, I didn't know about it. You know, it was kind of, anti, you know, I wouldn't say any God, but it just, it never really registered me one way or the other. Well, as I was growing, as I was going, met my wife, and she's done her testimony, Stephanie, and she'd go to church. We got married. She'd go to church. She'd take the kids, and I was going through jobs. So I, anyway, I ended up in a job in Illinois, in Chicago, in Carthage, Illinois, Metho Electronics, as a tool and die maker. And one day I was out in the line. I was working on a, on a, a machine, and this, where as I started my apprenticeship, this guy that was working with me came out and he asked me this question. He said, if you were to die right now, do you know where you're going? Of course, does anybody really know? That was my answer. And he said, well, when you get back in the shop, he said, I'm writing down some Bible verses for you. He said, do you have a Bible at home? And I knew Steph had a Bible at home, so I said, yeah. So he, she, he gave me the verses, which was Romans Road. And I went home, and I looked them up, and, and I think my wife was really shocked. <laughs> Where's the Bible at, honey? Because I need to <laughs> look these verses yeah. up. Good. And... So I looked him up, and I go back to work the next day, and he said, well, did you look him up? And I said, yeah. And he goes, well, what do you think? I said, I think I got a problem. <laughs> now, I didn't get saved at that time, 
I, and so he invited me to church. And at the time, it was a little independent Baptist church in Macomb, Illinois, Victory Baptist Church. And they were in between pastors. And the guy that was teaching me the trade was also doing interim pastor work. And so he didn't, he said, I want you, I'm going to invite you to church when you, uh, they get a new pastor in there. Well, they, they, they found a man of God. Name was Wayne Matheson. He was a Hal Anderson graduate, North Carolina boy. And he took over the church. And so right before Christmas, we started going to church. And that was the next real shock to my wife was because beforehand you couldn't get me to go to church. And I said, honey, we're going to go to church this Sunday. And I think she was just completely shocked that, uh, that I didn't want to go to church. And then we got there and I was singing and stuff. And again, it was nothing that I'd ever done before. I could sit in church service and not sing. And so I was singing along and she was really thinking something was wrong with this boy. Now I did get saved that day. He, he kept, you know, giving the salvation plan every day, you know, every service we go to. And finally one day it, it finally clicked that it wasn't anything that I did, but it was the blood of Jesus. And he was doing Sunday school on Leviticus. And he explained that and it finally sunk through that thick German head of mine that this is what it was all about. It was nothing I could do, it was what Jesus did. Amen. And I got saved. It was February 9th, 1996 that I got saved. Beautiful snowy day. Now, after I got saved, you know, started living for God, reading Bible, going to church. Now, you know, again, as pastor said, not every day is an easy day. You know, God, you're saved, but you'll run into rough times. And we've had rough times, and we've had good times. I will say this, having like the songs did today, you know, with he's a wonderful savior to me. He's always been a wonderful savior to me. He's yeah. been a wonderful savior to me when I've been not a good servant. And so I do applaud that. Like I said, this salvation thing, it's always good to talk about it and kind of it made me remember when I was asked about it to remind me about it. And so best decision that you could ever make was to get saved, you know. Amen. Amen. And also I got to announce here that uh, the special music's getting ready to start and it'll be the Young Men's Trio. Beyond my wildest dreams when 
I go to sleep each night. Though I've had my share of hard times, I wouldn't change them if I could, cause through it all, God's been good. All right, we want to thank the young men, uh, Tim Copeland, Jonathan McBride, Gregory McBride, uh, those are those are good fellows. And then uh, the young lady uh, playing there, uh, Elizabeth Harrelson, and we appreciate. We've uh, watched Elizabeth start taking her piano lessons and has just grown now to where she's playing in all the services and special numbers like this. Wasn't that a good testimony from Amen. my brother Gustin? I tell you, again, I've said it, you've heard me say it over and over again. I love people's salvation testimonies. We're going to have a young lady sharing her salvation testimony in tonight's services, and uh, just uh, excited about that. Listen, let's get into the Word of God. Can I give you uh, a couple of uh, a couple of scriptures? Would you mark in your Bible in the book of Exodus, if you would please, Exodus chapter number twenty? There we find. Uh, the Ten Commandments, and I'm going to be looking at those in just a moment as a reference point. And th then, when you found that uh, three places out of the book, uh, out of the New Testament, if you would find the third chapter of the book of Galatians, the third chapter of the book of Galatians. Uh, I, I'm I. Uh, I'm thinking maybe you want to mark one more in the Old Testament there, uh, the 21st chapter of uh, the book of Deuteronomy. So it's just real close right there with Exodus. But I, I do want to, I want to show you something there. Uh, I think a, a very special, we'll do you a, a walk through the Bible today on what was the purposes for Calvary. What was the purpose is for Calvary? So I've given you Exodus 20, Deuteronomy 21, Galatians chapter number three, Galatians three, then Romans three and five, uh, both verse chapters, Romans chapter three, verse five, giving you a lot more scripture this morning than I have been on the broadcast, but not more than we give at church. Don't you miss church? Uh, listen again. Thank God, Brother Copeland and I have said this over and over again. We're so happy that we can do this broadcast, whether we call it broadcast, streaming, whatever we may call. We're very, very happy that we can do it. We can stay connected this way. But I know every one of us would say we are ready for our church family to be together uh, back again. We don't know when that is, so pray about it. Uh, next scripture, our text today, Luke chapter number 23. Luke chapter number 23. And uh, uh, we're going to read uh, a little about the crucifixion. Now, uh, this starts, uh, Christ was arrested uh, back in uh, Luke chapter number 22. Judas Iscariot there betrays uh, the Lord at that time. He is uh, uh, then led away. He is arrested by the Roman guards, the Roman people out, temple guards. He's led away to uh, Caiaphas, who was the high priest, led away to what the Bible calls high, uh, uh, Caiaphas's temple, and it, uh, or I'm sorry, Caiaphas's palace. And uh, we, I made reference to this before. My family and I, about a year and a half ago, uh, stood there uh, in that exact spot <clears throat> where the Lord was led up out of the Garden of Gethsemane where he had spent an extended time the night before his crucifixion of, uh, of prayer and then and led uh, 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 across the valley up the hill into Caiaphas' temple. Or Caiaphas, I keep saying temple, I'm sorry. Caiaphas' palace. And so 
was a moving. I've been asked what moved me the most. And I have three or four things that moved me the most when we went to Israel. Uh, one of them was the Garden of Gethsemane and the tomb, uh, which is there, and then the uh, Caiaphas' temple. Uh, uh, because of thinking, as they led our Savior up, and I think there was 30-something steps to, to lead up uh, to the, actually where uh, the high priest lived. And at that point, uh, I could see them bringing my Savior across there. He had been spat upon. He had been hit with the hands. Uh, that he was being cussed at. Uh, now, uh, other places in the world say cursed. In Texas, we say cuss, and that's what he was being. He was cussed at, blasphemed, and uh, my heart just broke as I thought about after all Christ has done for us, yeah. that any of humanity would treat him that way. But it's no different today, is it? No. People still just ignore the Lord, uh, even cuss the Lord. I want you to go with me now. And they're, they've led uh, 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 Jesus before Caiaphas. Caiaphas then sends him before the Roman governor, Pilate. Pilate finds out that he is from Herod's jurisdiction. And Herod happens to be in Jerusalem at that time. He sends him back, or sends him to Herod. Herod sends him back to Pilate. Somewhere else, Caiaphas gets back in this thing again. Five, five mock trials, and they were every one mock trials, because Christ had done nothing worthy of death. Amen. But thank God he did die for you and I. Amen. Now, I want you to see this. In the 23rd chapter of uh, of. Uh, Luke, if you would stand with me, I'd like for you to pick up now uh, in about uh, verse 31, 32 there. And uh, he had just uh, told the ladies, the ladies all thank God for godly ladies. Amen. And this whole group of ladies followed the Lord weeping. And he had told them out of a compassionate, loving heart, as he has for all of us. He said, weep not for me, daughters of Jerusalem, but weep for yourself. Yeah. Uh, because he knew that he was going to die for us. He was going to be buried. He was going to be resurrected again. And uh, But look at this. We're going to look at just a little bit of what he went through. And look at verse number 32. And there were also two other male factors. A male factor is someone that had had committed a crime and uh, he is being judged publicly. Many times that led to just what it would lead to here and that was capital punishment or death. So it says, and there were also two other male factors led with him to be put to death. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him and the male factors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Yeah. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. And the people stood beholding, and the rulers also with them derided, derided him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he be the Christ, the chosen of God. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar, and saying, If thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. And a superscription was written over him in letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew, This is the king of the Jews. Now, if we go down through here, we see now where one of the male factors, one of them is railing on the Lord, cussing the Lord, saying, If you be God, take us down from here. As a matter of fact, both of them was doing that for a while, and then one of them realized this is not just a man. And he realized that he really is the Son of God. He began to ask him then, uh, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said to him, 
Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Mm -hmm. A definite, absolute statement. Yes. Uh, there's one of the cults that have that verse that it has a question mark at the end of it. Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Folks, that's not what he said. He said, you're going to be with me in paradise yeah, today. Yes. Because he had accepted Christ as Savior. One other verse I want you to read and we'll pray. Look at verse 46. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. He died for you. He died for me. Father, we pray. Thank you for, for the good things that have happened in our lives. The greatest thing of all is when we accept Christ as our Savior. Nothing to compare with that. Thank you for it. We pray that you will help us. You will use us. You will honor yourself. Help this to be a blessing to our people and to other believers that are watching. But God, help it to be a blessing to uh, people that are not saved. That they would realize, just like Brother Gustin said, then we all would say that we come to that place in our life where we knew we needed Jesus Christ as our Savior. And we pray some folks will get saved now. In Christ's name we ask it. Amen. Just back up with me just a little bit. Christ had been arrested. They take him back and forth, back and forth. Pilate three different times. Pilate is trying to release Christ. And the Jews, remember the Jewish government, maybe uh, just inject this. Uh, the, the, the Jews or any, any country that Rome uh, conquered, <clears throat> if, if they would play ball, so to speak, with Rome, then Rome would give them the permission to self-govern for a certain amount, uh, 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 to a certain degree, I mean. But uh, they did not ever have, as far as I know, uh, and I may be wrong on this, but I, to, as far as I know, and especially was this true with the Jewish people, they did not have the authority for capital punishment. They didn't want Christ, uh, the Jewish leaders, the Sanhedrin, the scribes, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, they didn't want Jesus scourged. They wanted him dead because he had said, I am the son of God. He had told them that their religion was not what that was going to bring them to the father. Can I say that to you again today? That if you're depending on a religion to get you to heaven, no matter what you may call that religion, it will not get you to heaven. There's only one way that you and I can get to heaven. And thank God, that is through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, 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 listen, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. We read two of the seven sayings of Christ from the cross a while ago. The sixth one, which we did not read, is found in the Gospel of John. And that is when the Lord said, it is finished. And that, that, that term in the original later uh, language means that nothing could be added to it to improve it. Nothing could be taken away without marring it. When Christ died, he paid the total price for your Amen. sin and mine. So they scourged him. Now, now that scourging was a horrible thing. They would take a, a cat of nine tails and split the cat of nine tails and tie either glass or they would tie a metal in the end of it. And then they'd get this, uh, this st very strong, strong man. And he would come and he would, he would whip uh, whoever it was. In this case, we're talking about our Savior. And the purpose of it was uh, like a grappling hook. It would wrap around the body and just rip the flesh uh, off of to the point to where uh, we're told that uh, the, the, the intestines of a person would just fall out. Uh, many people never made it to, to Calvary. Uh, and uh, um, <clears throat> if you just begin to study your Bible, maybe you thought that, th that Christ was the only one that died on Calvary, but uh, there was many people. That was a place for capital punishment. 
the crucifixion, my, one of the most diabolical, ungodly ways that uh, the, the evil mind of man has ever devised to, to kill anybody was the crucifixion of Christ. Now, as Christ went to the cross of Calvary, just giving you this a background, I want you to understand, we're going to talk about what are some of the purposes for Calvary. As Christ went to the cross of Calvary, he is, he is already beaten and battered, and no sleep. He has been physically beaten to the point that many people die already. Uh, he gets to Calvary. They nail him to the cross of Calvary at 9 o'clock in the morning. He's on that cross until he dies about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. While he's there, he's laughed at, he's jeered at. He said, I thirst. That was one of the seven things that he said. And as he says, I thirst, they bring him as a mockery. They bring him uh, vinegar again. Now he's nailed to that cross. There's a little step right down at the bottom of the cross where his feet crosses. And you're not seeing that, but his feet would cross like this. And uh, he, he would he would try to pull up like this on that little uh, little uh, stub of of wood down on the bottom and the purpose. And as he pulled himself up, then he would exhaust and he would fall back down. The purpose of crucifixion was suffocation. And as he would come back down, the the, the rib cage would just close in uh, on on his lungs. And finally. Finally, uh, he died on the cross of Calvary. Uh, they brought the spear, the Roman soldier, and plunged it in his side. And the Bible says that there came out water and blood. Uh, medical doctors have said the reason that water came out was because the sack around the heart was ruptured. You know what I've always thought? Christ died of a broken heart. You know why? Because of his love for you, his love for me. Amen. And I'd ask you today, have you accepted him as your Savior? Have you made the Savior your Savior? See, as, uh, it, it, regardless of the fact that he might be the Savior of the world, the only way he's anybody's Savior is for us to repent of our sin and trust him as Savior. Have you done that? If you haven't, I encourage you today to do so. Now, uh, with that thought in mind, they took him down from the cross. We preached about this last Sunday on, on Resurrection Sunday. Joseph of Arimathea, who was a secret disciple, and thank God he was not a secret disciple anymore. And Nicodemus took him down from the cross, wrapped him in grave clothes, laid him in the tomb. But thank God three days later, he got up again, Amen. making him victorious over death, over hell, and over the grave. And he is alive forevermore, the Bible said. <clears throat> that his death was temporary, just temporary. Now, with that thought in, in, uh, in mind, what are some of the purposes for Calvary? What are some of the purposes for Calvary? Now, many of these, uh, some of these you're going to know. And I'm going to spend this morning and tonight's message both just talking about some of the purposes of Calvary. Now, if, if, if you're saved, I pray this just makes you love the Lord that much more. If you're not saved, I pray that today would be the day that right there in your living room or the city park or wherever you may be, that you would today repent of your sin to God the Father and receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. So what was the purpose? Let me give you, uh, I don't know, three or four this morning. I'll give you some more tonight. But what is the purpose of Calvary or purposes of Calvary? And I, I'm not going to, there's no way I can give you all of them. I'm only going to give you 10, 11, 12, something like that uh, this morning and tonight combined. And there are many, many more than that. But what is the purposes of Calvary? Number one, the purpose of Calvary was to fulfill the word of God. Now, do you remember last week I told you in, uh, we used Matthew 28 and verse number six 
for the morning message. And uh, a part of that verse sentence in, in verse number six said, as it is written. You see, throughout the Bible, God gave prophecies. And the, the purpose of that prophecy, one of them was to foretell the future, of course, but one of them was to prove that the Bible is the word of God. Now, way back in the book of Deuteronomy, and I ask you to, uh, to mark that if you would like in the book of Deuteronomy chapter number 21 and verse 22 and 23, the Bible talks about a method of crucifixion. Now notice what it says. And if a man have committed a sin worthy of death and, and he be put to death and thou hang him on a tree, his body shall not replain, remain all night upon the tree, but that thou in any wise bury him that day. Now, parenthetically, it says, for he that is hanged is accursed of God, that the land be not defiled, which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance. Now, uh, I'm working from memory. I think this is right. Book of Deuteronomy was written about 1400 BC, if I remember correctly. So 1400 years roughly before, uh, and don't hold me to that exactly, but, but, but before Christ came and died, the prophecy was come, anybody that hang on a tree was cursed of God. Now that was given for a specific purpose. Now, I ask you to mark in your Bible the book of Galatians. And in the book of Galatians, chapter number 3 and verse number 13, the Bible says Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law. Now, notice this, being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. We just read that almost word for word in the book of Deuteronomy, when Christ was hanged upon the cross of Calvary, he was cursed for you and I. But the purpose, uh, uh, one of the purposes of Calvary was to fulfill God's word. See, when you and I pick up this Bible, uh, the King James Bible, we can know that we have the word of God. Amen. That it's not the word of man. It's not an admixture of what God said and what man said, but it's exactly, <clears throat> it's exactly what God said to us. Cursed is everyone, anyone that hangs on a tree. Now he was referring primarily as we look at, at the book of Galatians, Remember, in the, if something is quoted in the New Testament, it's expanded on, explained more fully than what it was in the Old Testament. Now, here's an interesting fact. If you're a member of our church, I use this and, and say this often, so you know it already. There were 333 prophecies in the Old Testament about the first coming of Christ. Now, there are many more than that, about the second coming of Christ. This is just one of them. So when you and I pick up our Bible and we read it, we can say, thank God, I know this is God's word. How? One of the ways is because God gives us prophecy after prophecy in the Old Testament, then he fulfills it in the New Testament. Uh, many times it said something like uh, this, as it is written, as it was written. And they're talking about the Old Testament. So the first reason, first purpose we see of Calvary is to fulfill uh, and validate the word of God. The second purpose was to free us from the curse of the law. Now I want to say that again. You're already there in Galatians 3 and verse number 13. The purpose, one of the purposes, was to free us from the curse of the law. Now, notice what he said. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of 
the law. What did the law do? It condemned us. It condemned us. Uh, the law of God condemned each and every one of us. It did, Ezekiel 18, 4 says, The soul that sinneth, it shall die for whatever sin. Listen, everywhere that we would go, the law would condemn us. It has, uh, as I heard one preacher say, or read where one preacher said one time, the long bony finger of the law of God was pointing at me everywhere I turned. Everything that I did, the law said guilty, guilty, guilty. I ask you to mark Exodus chapter 20. Now look in chapter 20. Exodus 20 is one of the places where we find uh, the Ten Commandments. Just Ten Commandments. Now think about this. Now the law did not just consist of Ten Commandments. Uh, the law, I think there were 600 and something laws uh, that the Jewish people were supposed to follow. Now let me tell you this. God knew that we couldn't follow that. He, he knew it already. And, uh, and so I, uh, let me come back to that in a moment. But look at, look at this, and I'll make reference in another point uh, to the Ten Commandments as well. Uh, uh, look what he says in, if you're in Exodus 20, look what he says in verse number 7. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. How many of us would have to say that before we got saved, and maybe you're not saved, and maybe you're still doing it now, that we take the name of the Lord in vain? How many of us? That means that we would use cursing and profanity about the Lord and use his name in, in vain there. So there's just one of them. Uh, uh, look, down, uh, look down at verse number 12. He says, honor thy father and thy mother that thy, name may, that, that thy days may be long upon the, uh, upon the land which the Lord thy God hath given thee. Now let me ask you this. How many of us always honored our parents when we were growing up? Amen. Or for that matter right now, let me ask you, this is very, very uh, special to me. How many of you honor your parents today? Now I didn't say there comes a point where we grow out from the authority of obedience to our parents, but there's never a time that we should not honor our parents. So how many of you have to say, well, preacher, I'm guilty there. Look right down from that, verse 13. Thou shalt not kill. You say, well, I'm free on that one. Really, when you go to the New Testament, and the Bible says if we look at someone with hatred in our heart, that we've killed them. Now, how many of us would have to say, guilty, that's me. I've done it. Look at the next one. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not commit it. Well, again, go to the New Testament. And the Bible says if a man looks at a woman, and that would be reversed as well, a woman looking at a man with lust in her eyes, that we have committed adultery already with them. How many of us would have to say again, guilty, guilty again? How about verse 15? Thou shalt not steal. Oh, preacher, I don't steal. Really? You ever pick up a pencil and take it home with you from work? You're paid to work 8, 10, 12 hours on the job. Do you work 60 minutes of that hour? Do you work 60 seconds out of every minute? Because if we're not, then we're stealing from you. Do you understand what I'm saying here? What does the law do? The law condemns us. So as, as the law is coming, uh, listen, uh, that was the old, old, old bony finger that was poking, pick, uh, pointing at us. Go back to uh, the book of Galatians again, if you will. And just stay there for a minute with me in the book, in the book of Galatians and, and look at verse number 24. In the Bible, remember what it said in the first part of verse 13, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law. Uh, look at verse number 24. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. Thank God, praise the Lord, hallelujah, glory to God. What did the law do? The law was a teacher to us. 
The law showed us that we were sinners. Uh, uh, you heard Brother Gustin's testimony a while ago, and I, I like the way he put that. After the man that was training him there, I guess it was, uh, had asked him to look up those scriptures in the Bible. He went home that night, borrowed his wife's Bible, and came back and, and read those Bible. And the man asked him, have you read the, the verse? Yes. What did you think? He said, I think I'm in trouble. Or I think I've got a problem. Well, that's what the Word of God does. The Word of God shows us that we have a problem. We ought to thank God for the law. Now, I'm thankful that I don't have to live under the law. Uh, you've heard me say, if you're a member of our church many times, I thank God not only could I have not kept the law, I couldn't have ever remembered all of it. The dietary laws. One of the laws said you can only travel so far on the Sabbath day. Uh, there's so many different laws. So what did the law do? The law came by and cursed you and I. The law showed us that we could not be perfect. How can you go to heaven on your own without Christ? You know the answer. By being perfect, you can't get there any other way. Well, none of us are perfect. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But Christ died for that sin. Now, let's go to the third thing. So we said, first, the purpose of Calvary was to fulfill God's word. Secondly, the purpose was to free us from the curse of the law. And thirdly, the purpose of Calvary was to redeem what was lost. The purpose of Calvary was to redeem what was lost. Go back to verse 13, if you would, please. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Amen. Follow with me. God created man sinless. He created Adam. We didn't come. Can I inject this again? We didn't evolve from anything. Amen. That's right. We are not evolved from some uh, amoeba on the top of some slimy pond where the evolutionary uh, evolutionist do not know where the pond came from, and they don't know where the amoeba come from. We did not evolve from some uh, little single cell creature. On the sixth day of the magnificent creation by the magnificent God that created all of the universe, how, how hard was it? One span of his hand, the Bible says. One span of his hand. He, we don't even know how vast the universe is. And yet one span of his hand, God put it all in place. Whoa, what a thought. What a God we have. What an amazing Savior that we have. And so God created man on the sixth day. Created man of the dust of the earth. Then he created woman from the rib of a man. And what a sweet, blessed uh, thought that is somebody has said that god didn't create a woman from the head bone for a man that would indicate that she's supposed to rule over him and if it didn't create her out of the fo foot bone that would create that would signify that he's supposed to walk on her but he created her from the rib the the, the rib the bone closest to the heart to talk about the fact of how much we ought to love our wives and our wives love us. God created man, he's sinless. Now I want you to, you, you, you to, uh, to follow along with me. God created man because he wanted to fellowship with man. Amen. You see, that's how important you and I are. And we shouldn't get a big head and get puffed up, but I'm telling you, you and I are important to God. Amen. He wants to fellowship with us. Amen. Hey, we're so important that he sent his son to die for us on Calvary. What an amazing thought that is. Oh, listen. And what free, sweet fellowship they had. Uh, the Bible indicates uh, in Genesis chapter 3, I think verse number 8, that God would come down in the cool of the day and he would walk with Adam and he would walk with Eve 
and they would have sweet, precious fellowship there when they come together. And then along came Satan embodied in the serpent, <clears throat> and he tempted Eve. She disobeyed God, ate of the free, fruit off the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Then Adam, she tempted Adam, and Adam, uh, Adam uh, uh, took the fruit, and he ate it as well. And that, that, that fellowship that they had was broken, was broken, was broken, was broken. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, you and I cannot have fellowship with God. And please understand this. God is not everybody's father. God is everybody's creator. But he is not our father till we accept his son as our personal savior. Oh, they had sweet fellowship. And then Christ came. Oh, thank you, dear Jesus. Amen. Look at that verse again. Verse 13 of Galatians 3. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law. What, what, what did the law do? It condemned us. It said you're guilty. Ezekiel 18, 4 again. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Uh, um, Romans 6, 23. The wages of sin is death. So it cursed us. But look at that word redeemed. Man. Redeemed. The word redeemed has a lot of different meanings, but it means to ransom, ransom. A lot of wonderful songs about ransom. One of them has says, hallelujah, Jesus ransomed me. It means to release, release from what? Release from the guilt of sin. You know, I never had any trouble before I got saved. Understanding, I don't know why people particularly do, but I, I never had any trouble realizing I shouldn't go to heaven because I knew I had sinned against Almighty God. The problem was I didn't know how to get that forgiven, but Christ died so I could have that forgiven. He died so you could have it forgiven. Think about the word redeemed. What does it mean? Here's where I want to get to. It means to buy back. A lot of different meanings. But it means to buy back. It has as its thought of buying a slave off of the market. Now, I want you to think about that with me for a moment. In, 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 the, in, the, in the time of the writing of the Bible, the Roman Empire has conquered much of the known world at that time. And it's said, depending on what statistic you want to look at, but at least 25% of the population were slaves. Another statistic said there were more slaves than there were free men. So I don't know which one of those is true, but I want you to take a, a, go, to the, go to the slave market with me. And there were slaves of all color, black, brown, white, yellow, red, there were slaves of all different color. And uh, so there on the slave market, basically one of three things would happen to a slave. Number one, you could buy a slave and treat him any way you wanted to. He was nothing more than a piece of property. He would be like a, 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 a piece of land, he would belong to him, a dog, whatever it was. If he wanted to be nice to him, he could, but so often what we see was not that case. They would beat him, they would almost starve him to death, and, uh, and they could do that. They could buy him and turn around and sell him immediately if he could make a profit off of him, or he could take him, work him, and then sell him. Now, that was one way. That's not what the word redeem means. Another way is that kind of like you found in, uh, in uh, Exodus 21, and we're not going to go back there and read that, but if you want to read it, uh, there was a man that bought a slave, and he was very good to his slave. And he even gave him a wife, and they had children, and the man loved his master so much he stayed with him, but he did not belong to himself. He never was free. Now, he had a great master. He had a great owner, but he was not free. 
But the next meaning is what this means here in, 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 in redeem or redemption. It means that you bought, he, he, he was bought, a slave was bought off of the market. He was freed to the point that he could never become a slave again. He would never go on the, uh, on the slave block to be auctioned off again. Amen. Now tie that to you and I. When we accept Christ as our Savior, the Bible says those that know Christ are free indeed. Amen. We are freed from the guilt of our sin. We never have to worry about dying and going to hell again. Amen. Listen, I, I may say this tonight again in, in, as I finish this message tonight. I, 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 may say, I may say this again, that if Christ, if Christ, if you and I can be good enough to be saved, why did Christ ever have to come to die to begin with? The point is, you and I cannot be. Christ died for us. He redeemed us. He bought us 100%. When we get saved, we are redeemed eternally, not for just time, not for just a period. But we are, we are redeemed throughout eternity. What an amazing thing that that is. I'm going to give you one more thing, and I'm finished very quickly. The purpose of Calvary was to exemplify God's love. The purpose of Calvary, number one, was to fulfill God's word. Number two, was to free us from the curse of the law. Number three, was to redeem us. Number four, was to exemplify God's love. What an amazing thing. Amen. Quote it with me if you know it. John three sixteen, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Thank God what God looked down at you and I. And, and, and listen, we could say God showed his love by feeding us or clothing us or, or giving us health and giving us breath and, and giving us a place to live. And all of those things are true. Every one of them are true. That, because the Bible says every good gift and every perfect gift cometh down from the Father of lights. Everything good that we have comes from God. Amen. But when God ultimately wanted to show his love for you and I, what did he do? He sent his son to die for Amen. you and I on Calvary. Hey, hey, listen, what does Calvary do? It shows us that Christ loves us, that God the Father loves us, that Christ came and he died for us on Calvary. The purposes of Calvary. I have another six, seven, or eight I'm gonna share with you. I'm gonna give you so much background tonight. But let me, let me ask you this, believer. How long has it been since you just got really excited about Calvary? Got excited, how, about, how long has it been since you've been broken hearted? Wept some tears and think, oh my, how could God love me so much? Well, he does, he does. And if you're here today and you have never accepted Christ as Savior, right where you at, why don't you just bow your head? Why don't you ask God the Father to forgive you of your sin and ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart and be your Savior? Are you convicted that you've sinned against Almighty God? You see, there has to be conviction Without conviction, there is no conversion. And uh, I, and listen, if you've sinned against God, I have an idea you know it. Why don't you go to God right now and say a prayer like this, God, I know that I've sinned against you. And I ask you to please forgive me of my sin. Lord Jesus, I understand that you died for me on Calvary. Would you please Come into my heart and be my Savior. The best I know how I accept you as my Savior. Thank you so much. I hope you'll be back tonight at 6 o'clock and then at the drive through after that. Brother Copeland's going to come back now and dismiss us in a, uh, a chorus. All right, Brother Copeland, please.
Thank God for Calvary and what it did for us. Amen. That ought to make us fall in love with the Lord even more. And so we're going to dismiss this morning by singing, I keep falling in love with him over and over again. It's now page number four, number seven in your chorus booklet if you have one. Here we go. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. He gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Oh, what a love between my Lord and I. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. Have a wonderful afternoon. Lord bless you.